Morning everyone, thanks for coming. We've been asked to basically tell you how our isolation unit is working as well as show you the donning of PPE and the doffing of PPE. Okay, so this is the equipment that we are wearing when we are wearing the full PPE. The first is a disposable gown, so it's the theatre gowns that are worn by the doctors in theatre, an N95 mask, a pair of theatre overshoes, a theatre cap, a pair of protective eye goggles or face visors. The visors are in short supply at the moment, so we're using the goggles. Goggles are reusable, they dis they're disinfected between use. If we were using the visor, then the visor is thrown away. Um, then a pair of unsterile gloves and an apron if needed. These theatre gowns are water repellent and bacteria and virus repellent. So we're showing you how to put on an apron underneath in case we don't have stocks of these particular types of gowns. Okay. So the person who's going to be putting on the PPE is dressed like Sister Ramlagan right now. So Sister Ramlagan is putting the apron over her scrubs. Then she is going to put on the long sleeved gown. We've got extra large, extra, extra large, and extra, extra large. So for the small people um, like Sister Ramlagan, we just took a pair of scissors and chopped the bottom off so she didn't trip over it. So we can always make some sort of plan if we need to. The back of the gown is a Velcro strip, which you'll close at the back of your neck. Then she folds that flap over and ties those ties on the left hand side using a bow. It's done with a bow, it just makes it that much easier to get the gown off when you've finished. Nice thing about these gowns is it gives you full protection at your back as well. Then what she's going to do, she's going to put theatre over shoes, over, over her shoes. If you've got shoes with um, shoelaces, make sure the shoelaces are tucked into the boots. That, because of its droplet spread and the droplets fall to the floor, this at least protects your shoes when you are in the unit. And you take those boots off before you leave so your shoes are safe to carry on wearing. Then she's going to put on the N95 mask. N95 mask, as we know, filter out 95% of bacteria and viruses. They have a pink side and a white side. The pink side goes at the top, the white side goes at the bottom. Put the elastics, one at the top of your back of your head and one at the base of your neck. Fit the mask nicely around your face, under your chin, over your cheeks, and then carefully mold the mask around the shape of your nose. Don't pinch that metal strip. If you pinch it, there's a chance that you can make a hole in the mask, and then the mask is obviously going to leak. And literature that we've read said men with beards, it's a problem. The seal is not adequate. So if you have a look, Sister Rumbergun's going to breathe out hard and breathe in hard. You can see that mask moving. She's done the fit test, which shows you that the air is moving through the mask and being filtered. It's not sneaking in around the sides of the mask. If you wear glasses, take your glasses off, put the mask on, then put your glasses back on, because you can't, it doesn't fit nicely. Okay? We have now got either goggles or the visor. As you said earlier, the visors are in short supply, so she's going to put on the goggles. Goggles fit nicely over your glasses without any problem. The strap of the goggles will go at the back of her head. She'll fit them nicely to her face, and then she's going to repeat that fit test, because when you put the goggles on, sometimes it moves the mask, and then the mask is not fitting well again anymore. All right, then the next thing that she's going to do is she's going to put on um, the theatre cap. The theatre cap will protect her hair, but it will also keep her hair out of her face. If your hair falls forward instinctively, you're going to reach up with your hands and move your hair away. So the theatre cap will stop that from happening. She's pulled it down nicely over her ears, so her ears are protected. And this theatre cap is covering the elastic for the N95 and the elastic for the goggles. So when you're taking things off later on, there's no problems. And then the last thing that she's going to do, she's going to put on a pair of unsterile rubber gloves. It's not necessary to double glove. 
if you're taking your gloves off in between patients, you spray your hands and you just put on another pair of gloves. The cuffs of the glove must go right over the cuffs of the gown so that there's no gap between the gown and the gloves. Okay, now when it comes to doffing or taking off the PPE, there is a corridor that leads from the ICU to the outside of the unit. In that corridor, we've got a stainless steel basin in which will be put a hypochlorite solution, which will disinfect the goggles. And if you wear glasses, your glasses also will go into there for 10 minutes to be disinfected when you're leaving the unit. The first thing that's going to come off is the theatre cap. So the healthcare worker will reach to the back and the side of their head and pull that theatre cap off and dispose of it in that red bag so that it can be discarded. Then they will take off their gloves using the rubber to rubber skin to skin method. So there's no ways that your bare skin is touching anything that's contaminated. Gloves are dropped into the red box and the healthcare worker then sprays their hands with chlorhexidine hand lotion. Decent amount, remember to dip the fingertips into the hand lotion and then rub that hand lotion over the all surfaces of the hands. This should take at least 20 seconds and you carry on rubbing until that hand lotion is dry. Don't rush it. If you rush it, first of all, your hands are not dry, you're not going to get your next pair of gloves on, but the other thing is that the hand lotion won't have had a chance to work, and it won't have de de decontaminated the hands. All right, then the healthcare worker is going to put on another pair of gloves. Being careful when you put on this second pair of gloves that your bare skin doesn't touch the cuffs of the gown because the gown sleeves may be contaminated. Pull those cuffs up well over the cuffs of the gown. The healthcare worker is then going to reach to the back of the head, take the elastic for the goggles, Pull the goggles off over the front of the head and the goggles are dropped into the hypochlorite solution which is in that stainless steel basin so that they can soak for 10 minutes. If the healthcare worker's got glasses, the glasses come off and they also go into that basin. If they're wearing a visor, the visor is discarded into the red line box. Although we had a directive yesterday that said that these visors need to be decontaminated and reused, we haven't worked out how we're going to do that yet. Um, and we don't have any. So at the moment, we're not worried too much about decontaminating something we don't have. All right. But the goggles that we've got down there in the unit have got little air vents in to allow air in, so there's less chance of them misting up. Okay, then what's going to happen is the healthcare worker will reach to the back of the neck and undo the Velcro and pull the shoulders of the gown forward slightly, then reach to the left-hand side and undo the bow of those ties. Now you can see why you tied a bow and not a knot. Okay. Then one hand is going to grip the cuff sleeve of the gown and the glove at the same time and take the arm out of that sleeve to, turning the gown more or less inside out so what you're seeing there now is the inside of the gown which is nice and clean then the bare hand will go into the sleeve of the gown and take off the glove and the hand out of the gown at the same time the inside is now on the outside. The inside is clean. So carefully, not shaking it, the gown is rolled up into a little ball and the gown is discarded into the red line box or bag. It's got to be folded up like that because if you don't do that, it falls over the edges of the skip and then somebody's got to shove all it back in and you don't know which part is inside and which part is outside. Okay, then what's going to happen is she's going to spray her hands with hand lotion again, remembering all those steps. When the hands are dry, he or she will put on another pair of gloves. And if you're wearing an 
apron, reach to the back of your neck, tear the back of that apron and tear around the waist of the apron so that you can get it off. We're not going to do that because we need this for a later presentation, okay? So there's a bit of recycling going on here, I'm afraid. Alright, so you tear the neck and the waist ties, fold the apron so that the outside is now on the inside and the apron goes into the red box. Then the healthcare worker will go to the side of the N95 mask and take the elastics and tear the elastics. Same story here, I'm afraid we're not breaking our N95 mask. And those elastics are incredibly difficult to break. You've got to pull like crazy. The N95 mask goes into the red line box. If you have a look now at the picture, I'm not sure if you can see it all that well, but on the floor there is a red line. The healthcare worker, when they have got their boots on, are on this side of the red line, which is the dirty side. What the healthcare worker is now going to do is they are going to lean their bottom, if necessary, against the door frame here, if their balance isn't all that good. Lift up one foot and take the boot off. And then with the bare shoe, they're going to step over the red line onto the clean side. The boot goes into the skip. Then pick up the other foot, take off the other boot, and with both feet, you're going to step over the red line so that both feet are now on the clean side of the red line. The skip is right there, so take off the gloves, rubber to rubber, skin to skin, drop the gloves into the skip, and then literally just inside the doorway there is a hand basin so the hands can be washed with a heavy scrub solution so your hands are nice and clean. That's the doffing if the person is doing it by themselves. The ideal situation that we are trying to use is that the, the, the dirty healthcare worker is on the dirty side. He or she has finished their two-hour shift or maybe now the doctor wants to leave, the radiographer wants to leave, whatever. A second person will help them to take off their PPE. So the ideal situation that we have is here is our clean healthcare worker who's just arrived wearing full PPE and there is the outgoing healthcare worker, the dirty one, who's finished working with the patient. This person here has not been anywhere near the patient. So they've got all their PPE on but there's no ways that they're contaminated because they haven't been anywhere near the patient. So the clean healthcare worker in full PPE will help the dirty healthcare worker to take off their cap. The cap is dropped into the skip. Then that clean healthcare worker will take off their gloves, spray their hands with hand lotion and put on another pair of gloves. Then they will help the dirty healthcare worker to take off the goggles or the visor. The goggles or the visor are dropped into the basin that contains the hypochlorite. The clean healthcare worker will help the dirty healthcare worker by um, undoing the Velcro at the back of the neck, undoing the ties at the waist, and then from then on, that dirty healthcare worker is by themselves. They can take off the PPEs in the same way as you saw just now, by themselves. Taking off the gown and gloves, okay, taking off the apron, if you're wearing one, taking off the N95 mask, the boots, etc. Then what will happen is the clean healthcare worker will take the goggles out of the hypochlorite solution because it's been soaking there for about 10 minutes and literally pop them through the doorway into the basin and this person can then rinse them and take them out of the room. So that's the way that we are working to go in, to go out 